<clears throat> yes, I, yes, I, yes, I. Yeah, I was reasoning from my brother in um, Ross Obadiah. I got to heal the eye up. Like you said, the art of listening, you know, and um, I'm listening, I'm listening. We're just reasoning. It's something that, you know, we we already have known this, but sometimes I think we have to just make a point of it because sometimes we make points, you know, while we're making other points. But then we have to kind of return and just zoom in on a few of the points and elaborate a little bit more. Did you know that the Bible, the Bible is not just what's called, you know, the Holy Bible from the English Western Gentile tradition. That the Bible is not just, um, the Bible is not just one book. Did you know? Did you know that the Bible is not just one book? I think most people say, yeah, duh, the Bible is not just one book, but yet we still treat or engage the Bible as though it's it's just one book. And my brother, and I'm asking him a little permission to share his audible, even though he just vibes with I and I, and he also heal up to Ross Seymour as well, you know, for the just vibes and then Ross Obadiah, yes, I, Abdiyu. Windeme. Give thanks to the reasonment because um this is one subject matter that we had um kind of elaborated on before, but that was on the former channels, platforms, that was at that time. And hopefully, you know, like like wine, you know, it can it can like kind of that, that fermentation, you know, and prove as it were you know, with age, you know. So he had come again on this subject matter right here. That the Bible is not just one book. I want to say this to certain ones and ones, even though this is going to mainly be about the Bible. I'll be checking out some of the comments. Some of the comments I've missed. I'm still trying to catch up on all the comments. But if I've commented, you know, on the Rastafari Jews, then that means I've caught the comment. And like to follow up, making certain moves on our platform to, you know, have engagement, you know, on certain subject matters and ones and ones to make certain presentation, you know, as well. Because there's some questions I like to follow up with some ones and ones as well, you know. But anyway, be that as it be that as it may, I'll say further comments on that for another time. But on at this time right here. For our hearts and minds, this is considered that the Bible is not just one book. And we get trapped in this kind of Western Gentile Christianity thing, you know, in, in the matrix, come out of her, my people, my come out of that way of thinking. Now, this is interesting. If we're coming out of her, you know, we have this whole idea of like birth, you know, birth coming out, you know, coming out of her. That's what the scripture says. So just taking it like be as what says be as a child. Right, you know, be as a child, you know, again, so we can receive this. So coming out, right, come out of her, my people. So we come out of Babylon, we're either going to be born <laughs> or aborted. You know, there's just a medi right there. Just had to share that. Well, if we if we're coming out of Babylon, like you know, coming out of Babylon, just just what's written, according to what's written, not getting into your own personal you know, ones have their own personal maybe theology and no disrespect there. But just from this reasoning here, just walk with me, talk with me for a moment. Coming out of Babylon, coming out of her, you know, because, of course, that's a she. And, of course, you know, there's been a lot of anti, you know, anti-womanism. And that, that seems to be anti-Christism on a certain level. There's been a lot of trick you know, tricking of the womb man as well, you know, even according to the scriptures from the very beginning. But there's been a lot of anti members of the seed, the seed of the womb man. But notice this in Revelation, we have two womb men. And this is the principle here, even in the scriptures, you know, because many times when one say Babylon and they say come out of her, fire bond, Babylon's a whore, a hoe, so forth and so on. Ones and ones in this life may get a, get off ended, offended. And take it out of context because others have hit you with a lot of rhetoric out of context. This is not what we mean here. It's just a, a reasonment, right? So coming out of her, we're either going to be born, <laughs> right? Or we're going to be aborted, right? In order for that one to come out of her within the context of even the revelation. Now, revelation is a book. Revelation is a book all in and of itself, and this brings us to the premise here that the Holy Bible or the Bible, as it's called, a.k.a., you know, also known as the Holy Bible is not 
one book. And often ones confuse that idea, you know, because we have the Bible today, especially for the past 400 years in the Western Gentile world. And also, you know, we say for the past a little less than 2000 years, but for us, you know, just to look at it in our context in order to try to make some um to make some sense you know we're seeking to make some sense out of this because often we look at the bible as 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 one book in fact i think i might just do this right here you know on what does bible mean you know just get to some basics here you know this is for for educational for educational purposes so let's put this right up here let's put let's put up here bible right go bible etymology because yeah, and this may help, you know, understanding what we're talking about. We think we understand what we're talking about, right? But do we do we really? Now, notice this. This is an interesting. Wow, this is really interesting, brothers and sisters. Let's zoom in on this right here. The Bible is not just one book. Bible. What is it? What you Bible. 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 Right. Learn to pronounce Bible. Yeah, I caught you. Say I got that tall. It's Eon. You know, he said the way he say Islam, 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 Islam. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, but it's true what I said, bro. You know, I mean, you could say what you what you like. You know, I'm not rocking with. You know, you could say the Arabic in that sense, but certain discipline of certain um speakers. You know what I mean? I'm talking about even black people who are speakers of these languages. We have to, the opening of the mouth. You know that whole Egypt thing, that Tawi thing about the opening of the mouth? Yeah, you got to open the mouth, you know, like opening of the mouth to speak, you know. And a lot of times you're going to make certain mistakes, so forth and so on. But give thanks, Zag uh, Seto, and Sion. But here, 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 going to pick up on some of your comments and like to have you on the platform as well. You know, Rastafari Jews at at gmail.com. A few ones do heal up. Heal up to Brother Paulos as well, Ras Paulos as well. So here on Bible. So let's let's go through this way. Bible. Notice something about the word in the in the phonetics bracket. That that's this part right here for those watching the vlog right here. You can see right there, you see where it says Bible. Bible. It almost kind of comes down to a little babble thing right there. All right, Bible, babble, babble, Bible, 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 Bible. But what does Bible mean? All right, and this is for those who favor the Bible and for those who reject the Bible. You know, we're not talking about one's, you know, one's religion or religious theological, you know, or theories of theology of God. That's that's that a whole other reason. Man. This is not that that video, you know. This is not that vlog, you know. This vlog is basically said the Bible is not just one book. A duh, right? It's a duh point. But but let's get into this. If the Bible is not just one book, what do we have here? In the King James version, we have like sixty six books. All right. Now notice that Bible seems in the etymological not etymological. This is the phonetics bracket. Right, well, we had highlighted this part here, just highlight that again. Right, that does seem to sound a lot like Babel. <laughs> you know, and I want to say, Well, somebody would talk about the Bible so much and say, Go to the Bible here and there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, we go to the, the scriptures, but yeah, we go to the King James Version of the Bible, but that's strictly an English thing, it's a Western Gentile thing. Let, let's understand that right there. Mm hmm. How do you say Bible in Hebrew? <laughs> this is just for ones and ones. How do you say Bible in Hebrew? <laughs> How do you say Bible in Amharic? Right? Or in Gutters? Right? Or, or in Aramaic? Let's get into it. Right? But after this, after this, let's go from low degrees to high degrees right here. Right? So Bible. Look at what they said. They said that the origin is Semitic. You notice that that's interesting that the origin here is Semitic. This is just a basic Google. Don't be a Google head, but you know what I mean? Don't get like cracked out on it. But, you know, you use it. Use it why? Use it responsibly. Right? So here's a basic Google 
right? And we had Bible. We noticed that the phonetic bracket looked like Babel, Bibble, you know? And then they say right here, the origin is Semitic. Uh-oh. Semitic. Do you know this Afro-Semitic? Isn't it interesting that the languages of the Bible, and even they say that that language of ancient Tawi or Mitzrayim, a.k.a. Egypt or Kemet, if you please, that their language is also classified as an Afro-Asiatic or Afro-Semitic. So Semitic, Asia, Asiatic, black man. Okay. So Semitic, then they say the hour going down means that it came from the Semitic is its origin. And then it's trying to say right here that it kind of like descends, so to speak. It descends into the Greek, right? So its origin is a Semitic. But then it goes down and it descends into the Greek, right? Let me just do this right here, brothers and sisters. You know, just some things in the background that we were doing. And we said, let's just get into this right here. Record a little something that's on the heart and mind. And then, you know, share it with ones and ones who can receive it. You know, so here goes to the Greek. So wait, 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 hold on for a moment. If it comes from the Semitic... Right. If it comes from the Semitic, hold up for a moment. Babel, Babel. You notice that Babel, Baba, Babel, biblically speaking, Babel. Right? Bab El. Babel. There's two ways of looking at it from the Hebrew. We can look at it as Babel, right? We can look at it as Bob El Bob. Bob it's like an old Semiticism, so to speak. Like we have an older Semiticism. And in the older Semiticism, right, we have Bob is a door and L is like the power or one can say to say like God, right? The God, right? So we have the, 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 the God sense, you know? Gate of God or door. Yeah, gate. Bob will be more like door, right? It could be door. I remember from the Arabic, Shufik, uh, Shufik al Bab, like, you know, Eftah, you know, like, yeah, like look at the door, open the door, blah, 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 right? But the Bob is the door, right? So we have L. So the door of L, to say in the English, bringing it to the correspondence, door of God. Right? Some say that it may have meant a door, like an opening, but in the sense of using another word, the gate. Right? So the door or the gate, right? The door of God or the uh, gate of God. Right? That's interesting. We, we didn't even get into the etymology, right? The, the, the deeper etymology. This is just like a basic. This is like the basic overview. So from, they say that but notice, they don't give us a word. Have you noticed that? Let's, let's scroll back up right here for a moment. Notice, in Bible. Now remember, the Bible is not just one book. So now we're saying, well, what is Bible? So here we're going to the etymology, right? Etymology, right? And then it says Bible here. So here's a quick um, definitions based on the Oxford languages that Google provides, right? As well as a Bible. little... Uh, Bible. You know, a little... Uh, pronunciation of it then they say origin now this is different from other words and if you've seen any of the other vlogs that we've done other videos you see that when we do the same thing for a particular word it usually gives us an origin word or language or whatever you know culture what have you and a word they don't give us any word here they just say that the origin of bible is semitic hmm. remember we asked what what how do you say bible Right? How do you say Bible in you know, how do you say Bible in 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 Hebrew? That's a question. We'll we can we'll answer it, but just do you think that the word for Bible in Hebrew sounds like Bible or Bible or whatnot? So why and how is the origin of this Semitic? And then we say it says here, according to Oxford and the etymology provided by Google, that the Semitic then jumps all the way over to the Greek. Hmm. Right? I'm not saying that this is not true. I'm saying that can you prove it? Can you can you fax it? You know, fax it. 
not, not like a fax. Nobody uses it. Well, we do use fax, but can you fact? Can you fact it? You know, fact it. So the first thing we're going to do is use this as some evidence right here of what they say Bible means from a so-called, um, you know, educated or, you know, according to the academics, all this is being sourced by Oxford, you know, Oxford big time, right? So this is what they're teaching, right? That Bible in its etymological origin comes from Semitic, right? But they don't give us the word. Note that, Habarim. You know, Katav. You know, like, 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 write that, write that, write, make, make a note of that. Now they say that in the Greek, right? In the Greek. Now we get to the Greek. They say in the Greek, right here. They say it's Biblos, Biblos. Okay, Biblos, and they say Biblos means papyrus. It means scroll. Note that there's a plural and a singular. A plural and a singular, but here we have a singular. Remember, the Bible is thought to be one book, or is physically one book, but it's a many books. It's like you buy a book that has a lot of books. In fact, here, up Ross Seymour, he had recommended, um, what's this book here, 54, the 54 books, like these, like lost books, kind of like the lost books. Where's this book right here? All right, let me just, she had the complete 54 book apocrypha. It's a 2022 edition and 54 books. So it has 54 books. Now, I'm happy they didn't say the complete um, Bible Apocrypha because we wouldn't know how many books are in it. But it says the complete 54 book Apocrypha. All right. In fact, give me a moment, brothers and sisters. I like to just share this with ones and ones because uh, this is a, a good book to kind of have everything in one um you know, have everything in one place, you know? So this is go complete, complete 54, 54 book, right? Let's go back right here. No, no, no. Back to the, there we go. Book Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Okay. And let's get that cover. Get that cover right there. There we go. There we go. There's it right there. This is it. This is it right here. This is the book we're talking about. So notice they could have done like back in the old school, I guess, because everyone's getting a little bit wiser, you know, so even in marketing or whatnot like that. But notice back in the days, they just say Bible, right? And Bible, as we just showed you over here, Bible, let's come out of that right here for a moment. Bible, right, comes down here from the, say, the Greek, Biblos or Biblos, Biblos, which means papyrus. So papyrus is singular. All right, the contents of this singular is it's saying a scroll, but yet it has many scrolls in it. It's saying a papyrus, but many papyruses in it. So see, something gets lost in translation. But notice in the Greek now, Biblion means a book. A book. Biblion. Now, I don't know if you, you know, but many of you probably do are familiar with, you know, back in the days when they had, a, it was like a scroll, like a, a rolled scroll. So they had to roll out the scroll or, you know, and in, in the, those, those old time things, hear ye, hear ye. And the person rolls out the scroll and they're reading down the scroll. All right. Is that a book? All right. So even in the scripture, it speaks about like the, the Brit, the, the Sefer HaBrit. The Sefer, the, the the book of the of the of the covenant. But as you get into studies, you recognize it's talking about like a leaf, a scroll. Is they talking about a scroll or even a papyrus? Right? Now, is that a book? You know what I mean? Is that a book? You know what I'm saying? It is a book. But when we refer to the Bible, we forget. Right? Or not even forget, we don't know, we're not taught, we're not, we're programmed, right? People are programmed to look at the Bible as being just one book, almost as though, you know, it was just like they said, this is the book of God, and it all just was like, came down just as one book, like one author, instead of the 40, you know, there's, there's a lot of debate on how many, you know, but academia has come to their consensus, you know, not always agreeing with them, but we do refer to it. Then in Greek, it says ta, biblia. Now, ta obviously means the, biblia. Now it says biblia means books. 
So you see they're doing a singular plural thing, clever singular plural thing is going on here. Then the Latins who idolize the Greek culture, they idolize Greek culture with everything except um, law, right? They adapt this here as Biblia and no doubt the same idea. Now, old French, so the Bible now comes to us in the so-called English speaking so-called world through French. Now, this is a discovery. We didn't really think about it in that sense. We didn't consciously know it in that sense. Be that as it may, from the old French, it comes down to us in English or Middle English, what they call Middle English, as Bible. So there, there is the descent. Now, let's go down here and see what they write down here. They say Middle English via Old French from ecclesiastical, that's to say so-called churchical, like Roman Catholicism, right? Roman Catholicism, Latin, Biblia, from Greek, ta Biblia, Biblia, the books. But remember, Biblios, right, is a singular, right? From Biblion, from Biblion, so Biblia is the books, and Biblion, but they don't say the Holy Biblion. They don't say the Holy Biblia, but what they say sounds more like Biblia. It makes us think that it's, it's one, right, book. Originally, a diminutive of Biblos, right, papyrus scroll. Now, notice what they say again. They say of Semitic origin. Hmm. Of Semitic origin. Now, how is it of Semitic origin? Well, let's go down here to Etim Online. Etim Online, one of the best etymological sites. You know, it reminds me of like the old time, um, the old time by the, the old time um, dictionaries. You know, back in like my 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 father's and my grandfather's days, the old time dictionaries. You know, those good ones that before you get to the one, two, three of the definition. They got this big, like, bracketed thing where they're telling you that it came from this and that from that and all these little kind of, like, uh, codes. But if you learn to read it, it's basically the etymology. It has those etymological brackets before you get to the one, two, three, four. This is like this right here, but it's an online. So those old kind of dictionaries, some of the Webster's dictionaries are still like that, more or less. But they changed up some things, and we noted that. But here, etym online. Bible now, quote, the scriptures of Old and New Testaments, early 14th century. So this idea of Bible, according to the scholars and the researchers, come from the early 14th century. That means 14th century, early 14th century is like the early 1300s, right? So in the early 1300s, so before the 1300s, could we say that the ancient peoples was talking about Bible? If they were talking about Bible, they were talking about Biblios, right? Like a, a scroll or a, a, a papyrus or a Biblion, right? Uh, then when the Greeks, you know, more and more, like from the Greek, well, all this is like Greek origin, right? From some unknown Semitic thing. Notice they never define, well, from what Semitic origin is this, right? And that, when I got into this right here, to see the Bible is not just one book, right? I didn't even see that right there, you know? You know, I didn't see that, that that would be the main point of this right here is what is a Semitic? Why do they say it's a Semitic origin? The only th word Semitically that I can just recall off the top, off the dome, is the Babel, <laughs> right? Babal in the Hebrew means confusion and Bab El, when the nun said as Bab El is the door of God or the door of the power, or the, the gate of God, the gate of the power. And when we say babal, babal in Hebrew, see how important vowels are? Babal means like confusion, right? Babal and babel, right? This is why in the Hebraic, we call it the, the law of the two truths, right? There's like the overt and there's like maybe a covert meaning or exoteric, esoteric, you can so say. But these are two words two separate, actually it's three, well, it's two words and, and well, three words, two words and a, a, not a title, L is not so much a title, L would be like, a, like almost like a function, 
you know, as I want to say, father, mother, you know, principle, source, power, right? To imply the almighty. So we have the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, early 14th century to 1300s from Anglo. Notice that? Anglo, Latin. So when we emphasize Afro-Shemitic, Afro, over what we're emphasizing, because it's right in front of our face. You know, it's right in front of our face. And for those who are on the comedic, you know, they said the comedic tip, well, y'all got to up your linguistics. You know what I mean? We all do. You know what I mean? But note, the key is that connection, that Ethiopia link, right? That Afro-Semitic link, right? Afro-Asiatic. Check it. So here they're saying Anglo-Latin. So this is like the other side of the tree, so to speak. Biblia. Right? Notice they say Anglo Latin and Etym online. Old French Bible. Now, this is the same as before. 13th century. Now, the 13th century means in the 1200s. So, this is good Etym online because it gives us an approximate time period so we can put things in time because there's a lot of things that we get to know, but we don't really know it in this proper time to say like it's proper context. Right? Even if it's a general period of time that can, you know, this came before that and not that becoming before this. So old French Bible, 13th century, that's like the 1200s. The Bible, quote, end quote, quote, the Bible, end quote. This is what we nowadays talk about, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. Also, any large book generally. So there's a, the, this is the connotation that's found in the etymological roots, the connotation. I'm not going to just call it a con game, but if you don't know, it can be a con game. The connotation is there is, there is what the word actually, like if I say dog, dog is a, is a canine, an animal, right? Now, if somebody says connotatively speaking, you can say my dog, like my dog, that's my dog, and not even be speaking about a canine, a four-foot animal. You know what I'm saying? So this is the connotation here, right? The Bible, quote, connotation. Also, any large book generally, any large book generally, but do we know of any other large book generally that's called the Bible? Nowadays, they say this is the Bible and that Bible and this Bible because it's kind of like, you know, kind of biting off of the Bible. But usually, any large book generally, if it's from that 1200 time, was generally referred to as like what? Bibliography? What's it? They call it a bibliography, so to speak, with a number of books. Notice that the bibliography generally is more than one book. <laughs> you know, if you do a paper or research and you research in different documents and you say, this is your bibliography, you got one book there. <laughs> Yeah, the Bible, you know, be better even in that case to refer to each book separately. From medieval and late Latin Biblia, right? From the medieval time and the late Latin Biblia, the Bible. It's a neuter plural interpreted as feminine singular. What? Huh? You heard? It's a neuter, right? It says right here, it's a neuter, where we are right there, what is it? Neuter plural, a neutral plural word. So here they're telling us, but this is in the parentheses, right? In parentheses, they give us, right, that actually the Bible is a neuter, that means it's not male or female, plural, interpreted. They make, quote, sense out of it or sense less, uh, make sense out of it as saying it's interpreted as feminine singular. You see there's masculine singular, masculine plural, feminine singular, feminine plural. And then you have a neuter, not masculine, not feminine, plural, not singular, but plural. But So this, the Bible is a neuter plural of neither gender, male or female, by right? plural, many, right, interpreted as a feminine singular. Hmm, what kind of game they're playing here? From phrase, from the phrase, Biblia Sacra, Biblia Sacra, holy books. N note that, do you see that, t take off that highlight there. Do you see this right here? 
Biblia Sacra, right? Biblia Sacra. So we were speaking in Latin and we said, oh, um, the Biblia Sacra. We would understand, right, that we're meaning holy books. No, we don't refer to the Bible as the holy books, right? As holy books nowadays. They say holy Bible, singular. But then, the, you know, that whole gender kind of bending, kind of what, neuter, plural, interpreted as feminine, singular. But it's from the phrase Biblia Sacra. Biblia Sacra is holy books, right? That means that that's more of the neuter plural, but it's been interpreted as a so-called feminine singular in the Bible. How do we begin this off? Saying that the Bible is not just one book. The Bible is not one book, right? So they say Biblia Sacra is holy books. I think, I think there'll be a whole different mind state if we start to look at the so-called Bible as the holy books, right? Or even the books, <laughs> even the books. Because, you know, some folks say Bible, and some will say holy Bible, right? But notice from the etymology of it, right? But we can understand the context, so we should be able to. A translation of Greek, ta, bi, ta biblia, to, to hagia. So in the Greek, Biblia Sacra is the Latin. In the Greek, it'll be Ta Biblia To Hagia. Ta Biblia To Hagia, the holy books. So the Greeks understood that what they had when they talked about Biblia was books, right? The Latins, right, speakers understood when they say Biblia, what they meant by Biblia was books. But today, when people say Holy Bible, they think they're just thinking about one book. It's just one book, right? So they'll go over here. And, and, and what does it mean in the prophet Jeremiah when it says this? And then what about over here in the prophet Hezekiah, you know, the prophet somebody else? You know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they go from over here to over there and don't even recognize, well, this book was written in this time speaking to these people. And there's some universal knowledge of this universal truth or truisms. These things can be applied to even I and I. But in order for us to know what applies to us, shouldn't we know the context of what we're dealing with? The Latin word is from the Greek one, biblion. The Latin word is from the Greek one, biblion. Paper scroll. Wow. And the newspaper, the good newspaper, <laughs> the good newspaper, the scroll, scroll, singular, biblion. Also, the ordinary word for, quote, a book as a division of a larger work. Note, note this. See, here's where I hope you're following along. The Latin word comes from the Greek, right? Biblion. Biblion means a paper, a scroll, or as we saw in the Google etymology, paper, papyri, papyrus. The word paper come from the papyrus, yeah? Paper, scroll. Also, the ordinary word for, quote, a book as a division of a larger work. A book, a book as a division of a larger work. So that means that each book in the Bible is really a biblion, biblos. Each book, are you following what I'm saying? Each book in the Bible is a Bible. <laughs> uh, but they say that it comes from a Semitic origin. They, they still didn't give us a Semitic origin. The Christian scripture was referred to in Greek as ta biblia as early as circa 223. So they're saying that for the old who believe in Christ or the Christian, you know, New Testament, that they referred to it in Greek as ta biblia, as early as circa 223, right? So this idea of biblia connected with Bible. Now, Bible replaced Old English. What's this one? Biblioteca, 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 biblioteca. So the Old English actually used, when they refer to Bible, they call it the Bibliotheca. I almost sound like encyclopedia, because the Bible, in a sense, is like an encyclopedia. 
But when it's just looked at as one book and you think you understand this part of it, well, it's all just one book. You think that it applies over here, but not recognizing each individual book or the context of each one. The old English said biblioteca, right? Or bibliotech. In the Greek there, or that, that part, biblioteca, yeah? Right? As the ordinary word for the scriptures. The scriptures. You know, this is one of the ways that we like to refer to it. Even um, Louis Farrakhan, the NOI, they also like to say the scriptures, the old time, the old timers, you know, like I, I, my father, my earthly and that generation, you know, when they refer to it, they would say the scriptures, you know, however they believed, you know, whatever they took out of it, they credited, they would just say the scriptures. Yeah, even the scriptures say, right, figurative sense. I think we use Bible now, Holy Bible more. We recognize that's what's on the book, but there was a knowledge that it's not just a Bible in a singular sense, but it's scriptures. Figurative sense of, quote, any authoritative book. That's why today they'll say, well, the, this is a Bible and that a Bible, the pimping Bible, the the the, the full Bible, you know what I mean? All kind of, kind of things, you know, because any authoritative or, or or this is the this is the science bible you know interesting right because it's authoritative book or collection of books this is from the 1804 bible thumper right which which is connotatively meaning a strict christian can we say like a strict wasp a strict white anglo-saxon protestant christian you know even if we're talking black but we're just pumping the Bible and not putting things into context, well, Thumper, is from 1870, right? Bible Belt, in reference to the swath of U.S. South, plantation. Can somebody say plantation? Not plantain, plantain, plantation. Interesting, right? Like plantains, though. But the Bible Belt, in reference to the swath of U.S. United States South, Dutty South, slave owning sla South, right? Slaving South, then, then, then dominated by fundamentalist Christian, no, 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 fundamentalist white Anglo Saxon Protestants who called themselves Christian. Check. Is from 1926. Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold up. See, we hear these terminologies, Bible Belt and the Bible Belt. We think that this was going on forever. I just up going back to 1926. It's not even 100 years. The Bible Belt terminology is not even 100 years old. It's likely that it was coined by H.L. Menk, Menk, Menklen, Menk, Menklen, Mekken, whatever. Right? Um, should we? Shall we? Um, her first husband was a missionary to China and died miserably out there, leaving her with a small baby and no funds. Her second seems to have left her nearly as quickly, though under her own steam, no, though under his own steam, her souvenir was another infant. Wow. For years, she toured the Bible Belt in a Ford, haranguing the morons nightly under canvas, <laughs> H.L. Mecklen, Menklen, Menklen, Menken, Menken. I guess maybe it's Menken. They have a C and a K, Menken, right? Review of Amy Simple, Simple MacPherson's, quote, In the Service of the King, the Story of My Life, end quote, the American Mercury, April 1928. So they said that this was coined by that guy. Right, just one more little part here, because we still don't see where they, oh, this is interesting. I see somebody, Egyptian papyrus. Let's hold on. This is just a basic Bible. Bible's more than one book here. We get into just a little bit of the definition, uh, you know, and the etymology of it. Hopefully forward, we can go into, you know, some, some critical text study. Did you know that there are more ancient scrolls, I say ancient, anything over, say, 100, uh, 1,500 years, anything over, like, say, 1,500 years, so, say, 1,500 years ago, uh, academically, the consensus is that's ancient, that can be regarded, you know, like, how old is ancient, 
You know, that's the question. People talk about, oh, this is from back in the day. You talk about the Ethiopic Bible and some anti-Ethiopic, Ethiopian Hebrews, Negroes out there. You know, you know our people. Not all who are of Israel are Israel saying that, well, that's not ancient. Well, if it's over, what, 1,500 years ago, that's, that's considered ancient. How old is ancient, right? Um, Walter Scott and, and Pope Homer was reading of my own election, but my mother forced me by steady daily toil to learn long chapters of the Bible by heart, as well as to read it every syllable through, aloud, hard names and all, from Genesis to the Apocalypse. Note, note that there too, that they used to call Revelation Apocalypse. Called Apocalypse has more of the idea of like uh, unveiling, you know, Calypso, Calypse, right? Apocalypse, right? About once a year. And to that discipline, patient, accurate, resolute, I owe not only a knowledge of the book, which I find occasionally <laughs> serviceable, but much of my general power of taking pains and the best part of my taste in literature. Once knowing the 32nd of Deuteronomy, wow, that's how they call it. We say Deuteronomy chapter 23. They say the 32nd of Deuteronomy, the 119th Psalm, the 15th of First Corinthians, the Sermon on the Mount, and most of the Apocalypse, most of Revelation. That's interesting. When is this from? 1871. Because we said, wow, Christians were into the Apocalypse? Uh, since when? You know what I mean? Anyway, every syllable by heart, every syllable. And having always a way of thinking with myself what words meant. Check this out. And having always a way of thinking with myself, meditating, you know, what words meant. It was not possible for me, even in foolishest, in foolishest times of youth, to write entirely superficial or formal English. This is um, John Ruskin, Fors, uh, Clavigera, Clavigera, 1871. All right. Okay, just just lastly but not leastly right here. I, I'm just scrolling down, brothers and sisters. I'm still trying to find out what's this um, elusive Semitic origin of the word Bible. All right, Semitic origin. What is this word? Here they have biblio, word forming element meaning book. Biblio, interesting. Biblio means book, all right? But biblia means books, but the Bible is actually books, all right? So biblio is a word forming element meaning book or sometimes Bible. From Greek biblion, paper, scroll, papyrus scroll. Also, the ordinary word for, quote, a book as a division of a larger work. See, now we said that the Bible is a book that's a division of a larger work. Then that means there must be other Bibles out there. <laughs> but really, it's that the Bible, right, is the books and that Biblia are those scriptures. So this, the Bible itself is scriptures and each book is a Bible because what is a Biblion from the Biblia, Bible, Biblion, the ordinary word for a book as a division. So we say, if I say like the Bible of Genesis, that's Genesis apart from Exodus, just as a book, the book of Genesis, the Bible of Genesis. Get it? All right? That's This is the true you know, the really real, right? A book as a division of a larger work, originally a diminutive of Biblos, Biblos. Biblos, look what it says, is Egyptian papyrus. Let's pause on this for a moment right here, right? They say Biblos. Notice we had to dig all the way down here. If we gave up at the top, right? We would never even got this right here. You know, sometimes you just scroll down, see what else is on the page, right? They say right here that originally... This word, Biblion and all of that, the Greek and the Biblia and the Latin, is a diminutive of Biblos. And Biblos is said to be Egyptian papyrus. But they tell us that the etymology of Bible comes from a Semitic origin, but they never give us any word. And that's why I said at the top, I was thinking of Babel, right? Bob El, 
in the sense of gate of God and Baba. So Bab El is what the people intended in, in the Bible of Genesis, right? Chapter 11. But the outcome of that, according to the narrative, was Baba, was confusion. This is perhaps from Biblos, right? The Phoenician port. Oh, so Biblos, right, is the Phoenician port from which Egyptian papyrus was exported to Greece. Hmm. So the Egyptian papyrus that made paper was exported to Greece from Byblos, and that is said to have been a Phoenician port. They said it was located in modern Jabil, right, in Lebanon. For sense evolution, the sense evolution, compare parchment, right? In other words, the evolution of the sense, not the evolution. We're looking at the etymology here of the word, but the sense, we get a parchment. So, so he's telling us that they were exporting the papyrus and it was like the parchments, right? The paper, basically. Or they say the place name might be, that means they're not too sure about this, but it might be from the Greek word from the Greek word. So, so they're telling us here that they're not really too sure based on their studies right here, whether it comes from the Egyptian papyrus or right, the place name might be from the Greek word, which then would be probably of Egyptian origin. It's like a lot, it's a roundabout way to say that they got it from the Tawi. The Tawi, which some would call Kemet, but we're speaking of the whole land, the Mitzrayim, the two lands, right? The Tawi. So basically, that was a runaround right there. The place name might be, might be from the Greek word. See, they still want to give credit to the Greek, but not to, you know, which then would be probably, right, to leave that little doubt there of Egyptian origin. They say compare Bible. Well, we just went up at the top Bible. Latin Liber, 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 which then means library, right? So the word for book in the Latin proper word is Liber, but they borrow Biblio, right? They borrow the, the whole Biblio, you know, Biblia, right? You know, they get that from, from Latin, Latin, get that from the Greek. And the English book, also are ultimately from plant words. That's a that's 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 deep there. Oh, from what words? Plant. Plant. So we're talking about plant, the papyrus, the biblia, you know, the paper, the parchment, the scroll, the roll, right? But what we have in the Bible is not just one scroll. According to King James Version, if we go back to the 1611, the 1611, 1611. Right. We have more than, you know, the 66 or so books that we have today because they took out the Apocrypha. Lastly, but not leastly here, Bibliotheca or Bibliothec, Bibliothec, Bibliothec. It's a noun. Also, Bibliothec, Old English, Bibliotheca, the Bible, the scriptures. You see, they said a little bit dubious there. The Bible still have you thinking a singularity. Why don't they just say the Bibles? <laughs> you know, or, or the books, the scriptures. From Latin, Bibliotheca, library, room for books. That's what we have in the Bible. We have a library. But people are approaching it as though it's just one book in the library. But it's many books. Therefore, a Bible is like a mini library if we get the right mind, the right context. Library is a room for books, right? So what the Bible is, is actually a book of books. It's a collection of books in one book, right? That people get to think of as just being one, one printed book, but it's many Books. In late Latin and medieval Latin, especially the Bible from Greek, Bibliotheca, Bibliotheca, right? Literally, book repository. It's a repository. So the Bible is a repository of Hebrew Old Testament books. And then we get the, the, the New Covenant, New Testament. You know, many people say the Greek, 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 Greek. But 
actually there's a, there's the Hebrew we use a Hebrew uh, recension, but there's also Hebrew scriptures. I know they don't tell you that, but let's get into that coming up from Biblion book Biblio Teka Teka is a case a chess a sheaf Teka right Biblioteca right the Biblioteca a book repository. Right, biblioteca from suffix form of the pi, p i e root there to set to put use of the Bible by Jerome. This was what Jerome, one of the early Western Gentile saints, they say the early Christian church saints. No, the Western church, you know, they make you think that everybody was doing the same thing. No, use of the Bible by Jerome and serving as the common Latin word for it until. Biblia began to displace it in the ninth century. So about 800, right? About 800 AD, right? The word got displaced and this is what leads down to Bible today. The word was later reborrowed by the French as Bibliotheque, Bibliotheque in the 16th century. But there still is no, right? There is no bringing out of this right here where's the where's that part right there where's the semitic part where it says it came from a semitic origin biblio bible it's from a semitic where was that brothers and sisters let's see was it over here All right it says a semitic semitic it was somewhere on this page right here hold on for a moment semitic no we saw this here semitic Semitic. No, Semitic. I know we saw that word Semitic somewhere. I know we saw it on the other part right there. They say two right here. We have, where, where is this one? No, that's down there. Let's go up here. Semitic origin. I thought we saw this somewhere over here. All right, all right. Um, But they tell us this over here. Right, once again, come out of Etim Online. Right, Etim Online. So it's actually not one book. Right, but there's a confusion. Right, the confusion comes in in the languages. But they tell us this right here. They say down here, well, they say up here first at the top. You see where it says Semitic? Right, they say Semitic right here, up there. And then they say down here. Now, okay, now I recall. It was right over here. There we go. They say of Semitic origin. All right. They say of Semitic origin. Here's why I propose, brothers and sisters, before we seal this up right here. Here's why I propose. I propose that what they don't want to say, they know this, but they don't want to say this, right, is it has something to do with this right here. <laughs> Babel. Right, it has something new with Babel, right? And Babel right here, Babel, right? Babel, right? They say Babel or Babylon, confusion. Because you can see how they confuse the terminology. If anybody was trying to follow along with that, hopefully we did, you know, a, a, a good job, at least effective, so you can follow along with it. But if there was any confusion, it's because you can see how they were like the the, the neuter plural. Right, you know that that neuter neuter plural being translated as a feminine singular. What the hell is a? It's not masculine or feminine, but not, and it's not singular. It's plural because it's many. That they make it all come down to be one. That's a confusion right there by mixing right here. And so they say it's from a Semitic origin, right? And here's the root right here of the Bob L. So Bob L is gate of God. That's what the people were trying to do back in Genesis, the Bible of Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 11. But the consequence, according to the narrative, when Yahuwah, you know, came down and such and such things happened, as was written, right, was a confusion, mixing, confusion, right, to give provender feed. Look what it says, to give provender feed. So babal means to mix, to confuse, but in another sense of the word, it means to give food to animals, All right? So, you know, you have animals, you just mix up this, you know, straw and hay and whatnot like that, and you give it to the animals. That's provender. Think about this for a moment, you know? 
You know, because from a Hebraic Judaic, in some context, right, the nations are regarded, you know, goyim, right, like 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 us cattle, in a sense. I mean, Israel is regarded as sheep, right? But then Yahuwah, Moshiach, is our shepherd, right? But here, to give, prevent, destroy, to mix oneself, notice that he fills sense of the word is to fade away, right? And it's from a primitive root to overflow, to overflow, to mix, you know, to temper. And then they say demonitive of Belial. Look at Belial. Belial, right? Belial means father. Belial, right? Mixed. Feed. Feed for animals. You know, from Balal, to mix, to confuse. Because you note that right there, that, that one thing they did not do is they did not, you know, go in to... The they didn't give us any word. They say it's of a Semitic origin, but they didn't tell us what the word was. But it, but we know that Babal, right? Babel, right? This is a Semitic word right here. That means confusion, right? Therefore, is the name of it called Bible? I mean Babel. <laughs> Therefore, the name of it is called Bible. No, Babel, right? Babel because Yahweh. Right? Did there confound? Look at the word confound. Balal. Right? Right? So the, the sentence here, from a Hebrew perspective, understanding the Hebrew, it becomes very clear. Right? Understand the Hebrew. Therefore, the Shem, the Shem, the Shem is the name. Therefore, the Shem, right, of it, therefore, the Shem, its Shem, was called Bob El. Right? Bob El. They don't bring this out fully here. For anybody who understands the language, you know, Bob, right? And L, right? Bob L. They were trying to create a gate to reach up to, to the heavens, to the God, to be God and to reach God, right? Because Yahuwah, Jehovah did there confound, right? Or Balal did mix and confuse, confound, right? Because they wasn't mine. They had to get straw and provender like the animals. You know what I mean? You know, to every animal get one kind of food. You know, basic, right? But you give the children a complete meal, right? But anyway, the, but there, right, confound the language. So you remember we just went through the Bible. It says Semitic origin. They don't give us no word. Then it gets to the Greek. Then it gets to the Latin, right? And then from the Greek and the Latin, where did it go? To the French. And then it came down to English. And you can see from almost a couple of centuries, every couple of centuries, it's gone back and forth and it's like you become confused. At first, it seemed like they had the right understanding of it. This is holy scriptures, books. This is books, right? All being put in this repository of one book, right? But then as time goes on, right, coming down to our time, it becomes a confusion, right? Therefore, is the name of it called Bible because Jehovah did the <laughs> confuse the language of all the earth and from thence did Yahuwah Jehovah scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth so Bible is not one book all right Bible is not one book all right come out of her come out of the the Bible all right Bible is not just one book it's a collection of books. I'm getting into a little bit more on this right here. There's some more we'd like to share, but we want to keep this within the hour limit, you know, and also take on some of the, you know, the naysayings out there, you know, the naysayings. There was one that we was going to leave as an outro. Okay, those guys right there, uh, the Bible code myth, okay, getting to the scriptures, the scrolls. Don't know if we have this right here. Oh, this is the one we wanted to share right here. Right? <laughs> this is not evidence. This is the claim. This is not evidence. Is the Bible evidence? No, it's the claim. It's the testimony. It's the witness. It's the document. It's like an affidavit or affidavits. You know, it's that affidavit. This is not evidence. This is the claim. This is not proof. This is not proof. Why? Right? This is the claim. This is the testimony. This is the scriptures. This is the affidavits. You know, you have to know the truth 
right, for yourself. I really don't know a lot about atheism. <laughs> this person says, I'm an atheist because I know a lot about Christianity. Mm. Well, therefore, the name of it is called Bible. <laughs>